right, this video will cover the sixth grade mock star given at Brown Middle School during the spring of 2018. So at first I thought this was like the star that was given last year, the 2017 release star. And I also looked at the 2016 and so it was different. So what I think is that this was probably a teacher made assessment. Um, and so I couldn't find the PDF file. What I did was I scanned the one for my son. So let's go over the questions and I would like to go over all of them, whether you got them right or wrong. Um, because we don't know if you just got them right by luck. So I'm going to read first problem. So we have Amy has five yards of border to put around a garden. And so a good quantitative analysis will tell you that you should um, acknowledge at least all the quantities, whether you need them or not. So for example, we have five yards of border to put around a garden. And she uses all the border to make four sections. So that will be also very relevant, that are the same length. So of course, that is important. Which expression does not equal the length of one of the sections in yards? And so um, here, one of the key words to look for is the does not equal to. And so if you are rushing with this type of questions, you might overlook that word not. And so for example, five over four, Five divided by four and five over four is the same thing. Five divided by four is exactly the same thing. So the correct answer here um, was this one. Because you are dividing the five yards of border in four equal sections. So whether you divide it like that as a fraction or as a long division or you divide it horizontally like it is written here. All three are equivalent. The only one that is not is C. Okay, so let's move on to question two. And so we have Mr. Martinez asks his students to write a situation that could describe the relationship between all the values of X and Y in the table. Um, so which situation best describes the relationship between all the values of X and Y in the table? Um, so let's see. And here, what we're going to have, um, we have x being the independent variable, right? And y will be the dependent variable. Now, this will not always be the case, but you can expect that to be the same all the way to perhaps your junior year of high school. Um, sometimes they switch, but I don't want to get you confused on that. So anyways, um, so we could say, and you actually got this one right, you chose G. And so it says Rachel had $6 and then started to save $1 each week. So let's see if that makes sense. Um, so she started at time zero. In this case, X is representing time and Y is gonna represent the money. Um, so started with six, that makes sense. And then every month or every week, she started adding, uh, saving $1. So plus one, you get seven, plus one, you get eight, plus one, you get nine. So yeah, that one does work. Um, now let's look at the other ones and see why it doesn't work. So for example, F, uh, six times, Marion has six times the number of toys. So that will be something like multiplication, like perhaps six times X, something like that. Um, so that wouldn't work, that function wouldn't work, or that equation. Um, if we look at H, Beatrice ran one mile the first week and one mile each week after that. That could work, but the problem is that she started running one mile on the first week, not six. So that's why it doesn't work. And finally, we have J, which says James read zero books in six months and then started to read one book each week. Oh, uh, that makes no sense whatsoever because it's kind of like they're switching um, the independent and the dependent. So most of the time, the independent will be time. In this case, we're talking about six months. Um, so it makes no sense. So let's go on to number three. The total number of items sold by each student who participated in a fundraiser is shown in the stem and leaf plot. And so we see that here. 
And so we have the one, two, three, four for stem and then leaf, we have those numbers. Um, and so we have that, which statement is best supported by the data in the stem and leaf block. Um, so you chose D, the most common number of items sold is 30. Um, and the correct answer for this one uh, should have been the most common number of items sold is 15. Okay, so if we consider um, the numbers on this column, those are gonna form the first digit of the item sold. For example here, this will be the second digit. So if we just look at the one and the two here, we will have the number 12. The next one will be the one with five. So 15. The next one will be the one with another five, so 15. And then we have another 15. So we have three 15s, and then we have an 18. So that will be the numbers that come from here, from first row. Now, let's look at the second one. So now the first digit is going to be a two. Second digit will be a two. Then we take first digit from here again. Second digit is a two. Then we take two of the first digit. Second digit will be a three and so on. So the next one will be 26, and then 27, and then 29. So then on the third row, we're gonna have three as our first digit, so it will be 30, and then 30 again, and then 31, 31 again, 32, and 36. Then for the last row, well, first digit is a four, so we will have 41, 42, so I'm taking the second digit from here. So then 48, 48 again, 49, and another 49. So now um, the question is, what is, which statement is best supported by the data in the stem and leaf plot? And so part, um, actually answer A, or choice A, it says that the most common number of items sold is 15. And so that's because 15 is occurring three times. So we could see it here. And uh, also we could consider that the most, the one that occurs more often. Um, all the other numbers repeat, but they only repeat once. So you have it once or twice. And 15 is the only one that occurs three times. So let's move on to the next question, number four. So a house painter makes five gallons of blue paint with every nine gallon of yellow paint in order to make a, a green paint. Which ratio of gallons of blue paint to gallons of yellow paint will make the same shade of green? And so here it's very important that you focus on what color is being mentioned first. So we have blue paint compared to yellow paint. And so we want to mention the blue paint first, which will be five gallons. So we have a ratio of five, and then the yellow paint we have nine. So five to nine. Now I know none of those answers looks the same, but here this one, no matter right. So if we were to multiply this by six, multiply by six, we will get something like 30 to 54. Like if we wanted to make six times the amount of that mixture. Um, so yes, that is correct. So we could draw on that. Let's move on to number five. And here we have Mr. Roy. Um, wants to buy a new television, but he does not have enough money in his bank account to pay for one. Which of this is not an option for Mr. Lloyd? Um, so he wants a new television, no money. Um, and again, here we have one of those that says, which is not an option. So let's see, he can save money and use his debit card to buy the television at a later date. That is a good option. Um, let's say, let's see B. He can use his credit card to buy the television now. That's also an option, maybe not as good, but here we're looking for which is not. And part C or option C says he can save money and pay cash for the television at a later date. That's probably the best choice. But here we don't care about that. We care about which is not. And so that would be he can use his debit card to buy the television now. That is the correct answer because he has no money or not enough money in his debit card. So if he was to do that, that wouldn't be a good choice because he will get uh, a charge, uh, perhaps an overdraft fee from the bank. 
So let's go ahead and move on to question six. Okay, so we have here an area problem. And so we have something that looks like a trapezoid. It is a trapezoid, actually. And so we have a playground. The playground at the park is shaped like a trapezoid. The dimensions of the playground are shown in the diagram. So let's review that. And the, the question is, what is the area? So the formula for the area of a trapezoid is going to say to add the small base and the big base. Or we could refer to them as V sub 1, V sub 2. Uh, when I was in elementary, my teacher used to call them uppercase V, and then the other, the other one was simply lowercase V. Um, but of course, you can use whatever variables you want, as long as you use them correctly. We are also going to need the height, which has to be perpendicular to the base. Um, and so in this case, the height will be 30. We'll call that H. So now the formula for the area of a trapezoid is going to be the sum of the addition of the two bases, so V sub 1, V sub 2, times height, and then divided by 2. So uh, let's go ahead and substitute all of our numbers into the formula before we start solving it. And so let's see, the area will equal to the addition of 68 plus 36 times the height, which is 30, and then all of that divided by 2. So what you should do first is what's in the parentheses. So we have the 68 plus 36, oh, it's actually here. So that will be a 4, we carry a 1, and that will be a 10. So we have 104. So now this formula is going to become A equals 104, oops, not 2, but 4, 104 divided by 2 and then times 30. So one thing I can do here is I can divide this quickly, so that would be a 52. 52 times 30 is going to give me, let's see, um, 150. and then we carry a zero. Okay. And we have it here. And so let's see what was wrong with your choice. Perhaps it looks like maybe you didn't divide by two, but there was something else going on there. Um, because that could be a distraction, uh, which we call like an answer that could be correct. And I think that's the one that you, you would have gotten if you forgot to divide by 2. I'm not really sure what happened with that one. Uh, maybe you multiply first, but uh, remember, you need to follow the correct order of operations. So I'm going to just scroll over it so you can see how I got it again. So I did the substitution here that comes from this formula here. Um, first, we do what's in parentheses. Then, just to save me trouble, I decided to do that division by 2. Here, 104 divided by 2, that's how I got the 52. And then 52 times 30, which was the height, we got 1,560. And of course, the units, since here we have feet, our units for area will be square feet. So, let's go ahead and move on to question number 7. So LIDA will use six different wires for a science project. The fractions represent the diameters of these wires in inches. Um, so we have a list of fractions there. Which list shows the diameters of the wires in order from least to greatest. Um, so this is very interesting because sometimes we can recognize right away which ones are uh, bigger than the others. So since we're talking about uh, small to greatest. So let's see first which ones um, have, I will start with the biggest denominators. And the reason for that is that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces 
or the fractions will be uh, as compared to a whole. So for example, if you go to a party and you invite four friends for pizza, um, you know, pizza has typically eight, eight slices. So if you only invite four friends, each friend will get two slices of pizza. But what happens if you decide to invite eight friends instead? So you're dividing the pizza into more pieces, and so each friend will get a smaller piece, which will just one be will be one slice. So hopefully you get more pizzas or something like that. But the what I want you to learn here is that if we were to compare um, something with a denominator of 16, such as this one, and something with a denominator of 32, uh, here we're already talking about smaller pieces. And so then we need to figure out which numerator, which is the number on top, will make that be bigger or smaller. So let's look first at the two again, that have the 32 for the denominator. And so between the 15 over 32 and the 9 over 32, the smallest of those two will be 9 over 32. Why? Because 9 is smaller than 15. So then I'm just going to go ahead and put my next one, 15 out of 32. Now I want to compare the two that have the denominator of 16. Because they're equal, um, not equal, um, equivalent fractions, but they have the same denominator. So in this case, the smallest of those two will be 5 over 16, because the numerator is smaller. And the next one is going to be 7 over 16. Okay, now let's look at the one that has the 3 over 8. So I'm not really sure where to put the 3 over 8. But what I know is that if I wanted to convert it to something that will have a 16 on the denominator, perhaps I will have to multiply 8 times 2. And remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you should do it to the top. So if you multiply by 2, um, here 3 times 2 will give me 6. So now I know that 3 over 8 is equivalent to 6 over 16. And so what you can see is that it's going to fall right in between this two. So we're going to have, I'm actually going to erase this. We're going to have our 6 over 16, which is in reality 3 over 8. Remember, we had to multiply by 2 and divide it by 2. After that, we go back to our 7 over 16. And then our last one that we will have is going to be this one half. Now, are we sure the one half is the biggest? Yes, definitely, because for this, um, if you had a fraction with a 16 for the denominator, half of it will be 8 over 16. And so, of course, definitely these two are equal, and therefore they are the, bigger, the biggest. Uh, so the correct answer here was A, and so that is the reason why. I guess the tricky part was to figure out that 3 over 8, which is what we did here, was equivalent to 6 over 16, and to place it in here, right in between the 7 over 16 and the 5 over 16. Remember how we put it right in the middle. So let's go to the next question. Okay, so number 8, uh, the list shows the area the square feet of each apartment available for rent in a building. And so we have a list of numbers here. And that is in um, area. So square feet. What is the range of these areas in square feet? And so what we need to do here is... Um, oh, no. Okay, so for this one, um, we just went over the question. So it says, which statement best describes the data shown in the dot plot? And so the answer is this one. The data are clustered from zero to two. And so you could see here, they're all in this area. And so the J is 
false because it says it has no gap. So that's absolutely false. Here we have a gap. Um, now, the first one, symmetrical, is not true because you can see it's pretty clear it's not symmetrical. Now, why is G not correct? The peak of the data is 5. So the reason for that is that um, 5 will be the gain 5 and not really, that's what they are talking about. Um, so that's why it's incorrect. Okay, so let's move on to, I don't know if I was able to record number 11, but here is the explanation. You got that one right, but in case you, you need to um, see it again, we created a proportion where we say the like the total number of students, which come from here, 90 plus 60 is equal to 150. And that will be 100%. So what will be the percentage of 12 students? 12 students are the ones who are left-handed, um, the boys and girl, girls. And let's see, I'm not sure if I was able to record that one, but that is the correct answer, F. So point Q was not placed correctly. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to number 13. A rectangular computer screen has an area of 8 square inches. The width of the computer screen is 7 inches, which equation represents x, the length of the computer screen in inches. And so here, we have a rectangle. Sometimes drawing the problem is kind of helpful, and I see that you got it right. Um, so just to confirm, the width is 7 inches. And then we also have which equation represents x, the length of the computer. So we want to, let's just refer to this as length. And we know that we're going to use the letter x, because that's what the question is telling us. So we're going to call this x. And so we know that the area is given by the width times the length. However, we do have a number for the width, which is 7. And we have x, the variable x, for the length. And so that will be uh, the area is equal to 7 times x. However, the question is, which equation represents x? So what we need to do is solve for x. So we know that 7 is multiplying to the x. And so to undo multiplication, we have to use division. So if we divide by 7, we will be dividing the area by 7. And so the correct answer here is A. So let's move on to question 14. What value of x makes this equation true? Um, so you got that one right. And so sometimes uh, it's OK to use this technique called back substitution. Um, and so if you were to substitute, for example, a number that is incorrect, so I'm going to pick the first one uh, just to show you how it will look. So if I substitute x with 190 from here, I will get something like negative 90. And this is the question we're not sure. Is that equal to, if we compute this right here, negative 100 plus 190. Or you could read it backwards and say 190 minus 100. And so that will be positive 90. So are this equal? No. Now, let's try with 10, which is the correct one, by the way. So that would be negative 90. Is negative 90 equal to negative 100? And then here for this plus x, we will add a plus 10. And so here, uh, negative 100 plus 10 will be, we get the difference between them is 90. And then we get the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value, which will be negative 100, right? So that's why we choose this answer negative. And so is this true? Yes, it is. So that's why H is the correct answer. Let's go to 15. A team of workers took 167.3 hours to complete a task. A smaller team of workers will complete the same task, but it will take them 1.25 times as long as it took the first team. Um, so in this case, based on this information, which statement is true? Um, so we have two teams working. The first team is taking this long. 
a smaller team of workers, so less people will take longer. And so it will take the same time plus a quarter of that time more. That's what that 0.25 is coming from. And so if we do a quick multiplication uh, and we multiply the 167.3, times 1.25. So we start by multiplying by 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. So we put a 5 and then we carry 1. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 1 is 36. So 6 and we carry 3. 5 times 6 is 30 plus 3 is 33. So 3 and we carry 3. And then 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3. We get 8. Then we move on to the 2. And so we have to keep that space here. Or you could put a zero if you prefer. But you need to move one to the left. So then two times three is six. Two times seven is 14, so four and we carry one. Two times six is 12 plus one is 13, three and we carry one. And then two times one is two plus one, three. Then we multiply by one, but again, now we have to leave two spaces here. Or we could put zero, so that's fine. And so we're going to write our answer right below number four. And so this is easy because it's a multiplication by one. So I can just copy the number three, seven, six, and one. And now, of course, you know what to do next. We need to add those numbers. And so here, place value is very important. So six plus six is 12. So we have 11 here. And then we have 13, 18, 19, 9 times 2, uh, Now, one little thing here. We have to count how many numbers are after a decimal point. And so we have 1, 2, 3, 3 numbers. So we have to move that decimal point from here, 1, 2, 3. So that's the correct place. And the answer should be 209.25. One, two, five. This one's right here. So if you notice all of the answers, well, actually two of them have that same uh, process. However, this one has the incorrect answer. Um, so that is the subtraction. And of course, the plus is completely nonsense, right? Because it's not saying that they just work an hour and 20, oh, an hour and 25 more, because uh, they work 1.25 times more. So that times should tell you you need to multiply, and not add. Okay, number 16 says which expression is equivalent to that, um, to 30 divided by 3 plus uh, x. And so here, uh, this one is not true because division is non-commutative. So what I mean is that if you change the order, uh, you will not get the same. Why? Because when you change the order in division, you're changing who's the divisor and who's the dividend. So who is the one being divided and who is the one performing the division? That's the divisor. And so when you do that, when you change the order, you're changing that completely. And so that's why G is incorrect. Now, let's see what's happening here with uh, S. S looks very weird. I don't even want to look at it, to be honest. Uh, but what it says here is that 30 divided by 3 is 10. And then you add this division here, 30 divided by X. So in this case, uh, the reason this one is the correct answer is because addition right here, that's the one that will be commutative. So it doesn't matter if you add 3 plus x or x plus 3, those two are still the same. As long as you keep the dividend in the same spot, 
and the divisor in the same spot, which is second. Okay, now let's look at 17. And we have Jamal wrote the inequality. X divided by 16 is less than or equal to 6. Which situation is best represented by the inequality? And so you got this one right. Jamal placed X cards in 16 stacks, and there were no more than 6 cards in each stack. Okay, so let's think about it. Um, so let's look at A. Why is A wrong? So Jamal shared... Jamal shared 16 markers with X classmates. So that would be more something like 16 divided by X. We don't want that. Uh, B, Jamal divided X pieces of paper among 16 students, and each student received fewer than six pieces. That's actually... could be true, but let's think about it. If he received fewer than six, then we will only have less than six. We could not say they received six. Then for part C, we say X cards divided into 16 stacks and it says here, there were no more than six. So with the no more, the difference between fewer and no more is that when we say no more, we're saying less than six, but it could also equal to six. And so you see how those two are very, very close. Uh, so it's a very easy, um, it's like your little trap right there. Um, they want to get you with that answer. So we have to be very careful when we read those words. Now let's look at D. Jamal separated X shirts into six stacks. So right, right there is telling me something's wrong. Each stack had at least 16. So let's see what at least means. So at least it means that it had mm, the least amount it had was 16. So equal to 16. Now, did it have more than 16? Yes, because it says at least. So 16 was the lowest, but it could have more than that. So that one will be this type of inequality symbol. So correct answer again, it is C. Now let's move on to number 18. So we have the students in a class where each asked to name their favorite meal of the day. The results are shown in this percentage bar graph. Um, so we have this bar graph, so for breakfast and we have here totaling 100 because that's like when you do probability that is uh, all the events combined so for supper uh, we have from 40 to 100 so I'm saying that's like a 60 percent for lunch we have from 30 to 40 so that's a total of 10 percent and for breakfast we have from 0 to 30 percent so that's definitely 30%. So here, which table could be represented by the percentage bar graph? So let's see the numbers that we have are uh, for breakfast, we get 30. For lunch, we got 10. And for, and so I'm just putting them in the same order as the tables. And for supper, we got, what was that percentage? 60. A way to know that you have your percentage written correctly is like you can add this ones, and they should add up to 100. Um, so let's see. If I look at the graphs, none of them has those exact numbers. So what we're going to have to do is uh, use our ratios. And let's see which one could potentially be one. So uh, right away, I'm going to eliminate this one because we don't have the same number of students who like breakfast and lunch. So that's not a possibility. Also, I'm going to eliminate this one because we, we have students who like breakfast um, better. And so that's not a possibility. Now, I'm between two choices. But if you look at breakfast and lunch here, we're saying that more students chose lunch, which doesn't match what we're saying here. 
because the percentage of breakfast is higher. So then I'm going to go with this option, H, and let's see if it's true. So we have a 9, and we have a 3, and we have an 18. So let's see. How can we go um, from a 9 to a 30? Um, well, that would not be an integer, so I don't want to confuse you with that. But let's see. Let's try to do this a different way. If we say nine students equals to 30%, the ones who like breakfast the best, What will be the percent, and I'm looking to get this number, right? What will be the percent for three? Three students. You could do here as a ratio, as a proportion, right? Multiply that. Three times 30 is 90. And then you divide by this. So you get, divide by nine, you will get 10, which is correct. So this will be, if 9 is 30%, then 3 will be 10%. Also, you know that 9 and 3, uh, 3 divides 9, and so that will be, if we divide 9 by 3, we get 3. If we divide 30 by 3, we get 10. So that's another way to check. And this for 18, you can see that if 3 is 10%, then 18 is going to be 6 times. From 3 to 18, you will have to multiply by 6. So 10% multiplied by 6 will give you 60%. And so that's what we had for supper. Percentage of students who prefer to eat supper. Um, I'm not even sure that's the question. Yeah, their favorite meal. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, question. And so we have some algebra tiles. Which model shows two equal expression expressions when the value of x is 4? Okay, and so let's see. What we're saying here is that 4 x's are equal to 4. So, so, so to solve for x, it will be x is equal to 4 divided by 4. Why am I dividing? Well, because this 4 here is multiplying to my x, so the inverse operation is division. And so here we will get something like x equals to 1. So that's wrong. Now let's look at the next one. Here we're saying that 4x is equal to to 1. So what we're saying is that x is equal, you already know the 4 is multiplying to the x, so we're going to have to do the inverse operation, divide. So we get 1 fourth. So that is also wrong. Now let's look at c. What we're saying here is that 1x plus 2 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 5. So if we want to solve for this equation, solve for x, we're going to get x is equal to 5. And we see this 2 is adding to the x, so we're going to do is take it across. And remember, that will change to its inverse operation, which is subtraction. So instead of a plus, we'll have a minus 2. So what is 5 minus 2 is 3. And so that's also not what we're looking for. We want to find an equation where we get x equals 4. So this is wrong as well. Now let's look at the last one. The last one says, option D, it says 2x is equal to 8. And so right there, to solve for x, we're going to have x is equal to 8 divided by 2. So we have that x is equal to 4. And so that one right there is the correct answer. Now let's look at number 20. Customers at an ice cream shop 
took a survey, the students showed that 144 customers rated the shop as being very satisfactory. So we have 144 customers were surveyed. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. That's just the number of customers that rated as very satisfactory right here. So that's not the total. Now this number represented 45% of the customers who took the survey. What was the total number of customers who took the survey? So let's look at this question first and see that what they're asking is the total number. So they're asking for the how many number of customers will represent 100%. That is the question. So if we set up a proportion here, we could say that 144 customers represents or is equal to 45% of the students, I'm sorry, of the people who were surveyed. And so our question is to find how many of those will equal 100% of all the people who were surveyed. Um, so let me tell you right away what this is wrong. Um, if we're saying that 45%, 45% is very close to 50%. We know that 50% is half. So if we were to suppose that 144 is 50%, double that and you will get 288. So that will be the 100%. But we're not talking about that number. So that will tell you that the number has to be almost as twice, actually, in fact, a little bit over twice that, that number. So what we should do, we could put an X here for our unknown variable. And so what we're going to do again is multiply this ones that are across and in the diagonal and divide by this number right here. And so um, I can tell you right away that it's going to be 144. We can put two extra zeros because that's what happens when you multiply by 100. And then divide it by 40. Five. Now, if you're running out of time, which I hope not, but if you are and you have to make a quick choice or if you do your math and you get a number that is smaller, that is also nonsense because we want the total. We want something bigger than 144. So this two could be eliminated right away. And if you use that process of elimination, you should know that the total number is going to be more than twice the 144. Because to get to 100%, you will have to double this one, and that will only give you 90%, and then you'll still have another 10% missing there. So that's how you should know that this is definitely wrong. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish number 22, 21 and 22, to finish this page. So Leon wrote an expression that is equivalent to 30 plus 6 divided by 12, which expression could be the one Leon wrote. Um, so we want something that is equivalent. Now, remember what I, we talked about division. Division is not commutative. So we want to make sure that we have a 12 on the right side, that we're dividing by 12. The divisor is 12. So we check quickly. 3 times 4 is 12, so that's good. 3 times 2 times 2 is 12, so that's good. 4 times 3 is also 12, so that's good. And then here, 3 times 2 times 2 is also 12. So all those three by the divisor are correct. Now let's look at the dividend. And so the dividend, you could see that it will be 36. 30 plus 6. And so if we look at option A, 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, times 2 again, that's 36. So that's our correct one. Let's look at this one here. We have um, 36 divided by 12. Oh. Thirty-six divided by that. Hmm. I'm thinking that B is also correct, but I'll go back to it. Now let's look at C. And C has three times three, that is nine, times four, that is also thirty-six. Okay. So then there should be a problem. 
some more. Okay, uh, let's see this one. So 5 times 6 is 30. And then 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, now I'm very confused because this is also equivalent. 36 divided by 12. That's what they all are. Um, here I also got 9 times 4. 9 times 4 is 36, right? So 36 divided by 12. Uh, and here we have 36 divided by 12. And here we also have 36 divided by 12. So um, right here, I'm just going to say that all they're all equivalent. Perhaps what the answer key, I know because of the answer key, the correct answer is A. Um, perhaps because it's also associating as the same way. So we have parentheses here for the dividend. And we have the parentheses here for the divisor. Um, that is the only thing I can think of um, that could be the reason why. So you might want to ask your teacher for this one. 22, Megan and Desmond each added the same amount of water to their aquariums. Megan mixed five milliliters of a chemical solution with every gallon of water for her aquarium. And then we have Desmond who makes eight milliliters of the same solution uh, with every two gallons of water. So we have different ratios here. Um, what we're going to say for Megan's ratio is that she's using five to one. And what we're going to say about Desmond is that he's using eight to two. Or if we reduce this one, we could also call it four to one. Um, these two are equivalent. And so the use of changing a ratio is that you can compare it to another. So now here you could see easily that um, Megan is actually adding more of that solution. So let's look at the question. And it says here, um, It doesn't really have a question. Okay, so I guess um, we just make a conjecture statement out of it. So here, correct, and you got to correct. So G, Megan used more solution per gallon of water than Desmond. So we have 5 to 1 is greater than 8 to 2. And yes, that's correct. We demonstrated with this conversion here, 5 to 1 is greater. Uh, and so that is the correct answer. So let me see how many more problems we have. We do have a, quite a few. So I'm going to stop this video here so it's not too long, and then I will record the remaining problems, which will be from 23 all the way to question, let's see, 38. Okay, so we just have 38 minus 23. So we have 15 questions to go, so that's good. We got done with more than half. Um, so this video cover from question 1 to question 23. Or 22, actually.